How's it going everybody? Raising Hell here and today I'm going to be starting a bit of a new series. We're going to see how it works out. It's based around Stronghold Kingdoms and I'm going to be answering some commonly asked questions that I see in the Stronghold Kingdoms forums. So I'm not exactly sure how many questions I'll be doing per episode. I think it depends largely on the type of question, how long it takes to answer it and stuff like that. But I thought this was one of those formats where I could sort of still be involved in the game without actually playing it. You might be aware lately I haven't really had the time or inclination to play Stronghold Kingdoms much. It is a game that requires a fair amount of dedication and the thing is I sort of feel my knowledge of the game slipping away the more time I spend away from it. So this hopefully will in some ways refresh my knowledge of the game, make me think about some of these more commonly discussed concepts and at the same time hopefully inform some of you who are especially newer to the game uh, about how a lot of these common questions work. Well, not the common questions, but how uh, the answers to a lot of these common questions about the game. So question number one we have, how to tell if a player is inactive. So when you're looking to capture a village, a lot of the times newer players will be on the lookout for inactive players because either they're not in a house or they don't feel like they have the skill to take out an active player. You know, take on an active player when you're still quite small yourself is usually not advisable unless you have a house to back you up. So a lot of people ask about how to tell if a player is inactive, and there are several ways to do this. The most common is probably go ahead and mail them. If they respond within a couple of days, you can be fairly sure that they're active. If they respond within a week or so, I would say there's a good chance that you can go ahead and take their village, but you know, it depends upon you picking the fights that you think you can win. Right. Another thing to keep an eye on is simply the map. Uh, if you see trading going out or scouting, that most likely means that they're active or they at least have a premium token in play, which means that they probably have a little bit more invested in the account than your average player. Finally, one of the best ways to sort of determine if a player is actively logging in or not, if you don't see any of the other sort of signs and there is r complete radio silence between you and them is taking a look at their points. So in other words, when you build structures in your villages and you build castle structures, all those things increase your points as a player. There is a page on the wiki that details exactly how many points each structure provides. But if you see their points going up, that means they're most likely active. If you see their points going down, there's a good chance that they're not active. So the reason points would largely go down is if an AI attacks a player and destroys structures in the castle and potentially raises, uh, or I mean, ransacks buildings in the village itself. Those will cause, you know, those actions will cause the player to actually lose points overall. And if you observe them over the space of a week and they're continually losing points, that's also a fairly good indicator that that, play that person hasn't logged in to repair anything for a week or so. Okay, question number two. Is there any way to contact support? So there isn't anything like a hotline or anything the, uh, like a physical address that you really can mail stuff to. So no phone number, no mailing. But what a lot of um, a lot of the time, Firefly will direct you to their support ticket site. Now on the site, you can log in with your account details, and then you can submit a ticket to the Firefly Studios, who runs Stronghold Kingdoms. That's the best way to directly contact uh, the admins, the developers as a player. Uh, alternative. Alternatively, and by the way, when it comes to this, the address for it is http colon forward slash forward slash support dot stronghold kingdoms dot com. Now, in the past, I recall using a secured connection, so HTTPS, but recently that doesn't appear to work anymore. I'm not sure. Maybe their uh, security certificate expired or what, but uh, I most recently remember somebody contacting me via email and they asked me, you know, how do I contact support? And I gave them that address and it didn't work because there was that S in it. It was HTTPS. I, I wrote that out instead of just HTTP. And now I even see the administrators using HTTP in the forums itself. So I'm thinking that something must have happened to the security certificate and they're no longer using that address. That's just the way it seems to me. I could be wrong about this. If you have any additional information, feel free to correct me. When you submit a ticket to support, that's the best way to get in direct contact with the administrators. But alternative 
Alternatively, you can also post your questions and concerns in the Stronghold Kingdoms forums. So that would be forum.strongholdkingdoms.com. There are many different subforums for different languages and different worlds. There is also pretty much a subforum for if you have feedback to provide in the game, if you need technical help, if you need game help, all of those forums are covered. Now, of course, the quality of answers depends largely on the volunteer community who is active on there, but that's definitely a better way to go about getting help if you need something, if you need help related to actual gameplay elements rather than technical help. If you're having technical problems, make sure, you know, to let Firefly know via the ticket support system. But if you're having more gameplay related problems, you're not going to really get an answer from the support system. You're going to be redirected to the forums where a lot of players can advise you. Question number three, how can I buy my second village? So there are a few things that players mess up when it comes to acquiring their second village. Obviously, a lot of players go the route of capturing an inactive player, but you can alternatively buy a village. This is going to cost you more than if you capture a village, but if you can't find any nearby village that is in a state that you can take over yourself and you don't have a faction to back you up, you probably will want to go and go ahead and buy a village charter. The other positive thing about buying a village charter is that you get to choose the village type that it will be immediately. So if you don't want to have to wait down those three days or so to convert your village type after capturing it from another player, the best way to go is to get get a captain and then purchase a charter. So what you're going to need to go ahead and buy a second village is you need the corresponding research in leadership to actually hold multiple villages. So as you invest more research points in leadership, it unlocks your village slots. I'm going to call them slots. That basically means you can hold more villages in your account on that world. So you need to make sure that you have the relevant research applied to the leadership technology that will unlock the, the your ability to have a second village or a third village or a fourth village. You get the point. You also need a captain. So captains cost more gold consecutively as you purchase more of them. Each consecutive captain after that is going to cost an additional thousand gold. Then you'll need enough gold to buy a charter. So of course, when you're looking to buy villages, you don't ca you don't look for villages that exist on the map. You have to look for those little pieces of paper, and then you can click on them and click purchase. The thing is, instead of using military might to take over those charters, you're going to be using economic might, and that means you're going to need a fair amount of gold in your coffers. Now, the thing about buying charters, unlike capturing villages, is that it depends upon your distance from the charter. So charters that are further from you are going to cost more than charters that are nearby. Whereas if you're capturing a village, it really doesn't matter how far away it is, you, you're still going to hit it with the same attack force. So then once you have found a charter, you have a captain, you have the corresponding research and leadership, you can go ahead and click on that charter and press the purchase button and your captain will travel from your village all the way to the charter. And once it reaches it, of course, you'll get to select what type of village you want as you click the purchase button on the charter. But once your captain reaches that charter, it will turn into a new village with the default amount of peacetime applied to it so that other players can't attack it. The AI can attack it though. Peacetime is not like interdiction. And uh, that's basically how you get a second village. Uh, the fourth question we have here, I think this is going to be the last one. Why can't I buy weapons in my parish? So this is a good question because it's not always apparent to players who aren't like really up on the rules and know the differences that each age brings. So the reason you can't, just like the base reason you can't buy weapons sometimes from your parish or sell weapons to it, there are different ages in Stronghold Kingdoms. And if you're in an age that restricts weapons from being bought and sold in the marketplace, then you can't do that. The best way really to find out uh, whether or not you're in an age that restricts weapons is simply to check the market itself. And if you see that, if you see that you can't buy weapons, before you ask about why you can't buy them, you know, like, like if you assume it's a bug or something, go ahead and check the Stronghold Kingdom's wiki out. There will be information about, you know, what rule changes have been made for that age, and it will list in there whether or not the market has been restricted for that individual age. Overall, there are a total of seven ages, so as you might imagine, the rules start to really compound upon each other, and it can be quite confusing to keep track of all seven of the those individual
individual rule sets for an average player. So I sort of understand your confusion. But at the same time, remember the wiki is always your friend and that should be your first source of information if you're wondering something about the game. Like even before, you know, you pay attention to anything I say, you probably should go ahead and check the wiki first because it's certainly possible that I got my information wrong, although I do my utmost to make sure that the things I say and the advice I give is accurate. So uh, that is pretty much the conclusion for today's episode about uh, Stronghold Kingdoms. This is the Forum FAQs series, I guess we're going to call it. Forum FAQs. I think I think that's a pretty decent name. If you have questions yourself that you would like me to answer, feel free to email them to me. My email address is provided in the about page. Otherwise, you can leave them as a comment below, but uh, there is a less likely chance that I'll pay any attention to that because YouTube comments and that being a thing, I don't like them at all, to be honest. But uh, if, if that's the way you prefer to roll, go ahead and do it. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time.